Today I'm swatching my professional yellow watercolour paints. I'll explain why I've chosen these yellow watercolours and we'll also be painting this sweet yellow wildflower. So grab a coffee and paint along with me in watercolour. So I thought I'd share with you my professional paints. Ordinarily, when I'm doing my YouTube tutorials, I will sort of use my everyday paints, but these are the paints that I use if I'm doing maybe some freelance illustration work, and um, these are my professional colors that I have here. My acetate sheet that I use to protect them, and all the colors that I've swatched out on my watercolor card here relate to the colors in turn within my palette. I'll put a link in the description box below because I've done a separate video on how to make a color chart. You'll notice that I use both pans and tubes and I squeeze the tubes into the pans ready to use. So the paper that I'm using is a rough textured surface today and it's 300 GSM. So we are going to be spotting all the yellows, which I know are, I just sort of got some autumnal colors in there as well, which I thought sit nicely within the palette. So cadmium yellow pale is up first. This is an opaque color with staining properties and I use it to mix um, a lot of my green colors and also it brightens up some of the more kind of muted tones and I really do like using this color. It's really really bright and vibrant. So the next colors that we have um, which I've swatched out in readiness are cadmium lemon, quinacridone gold which I'll come back to a little later along with transparent yellow and Indian yellow. Uh, next up we have Naples. Now this is uh, an opaque colour and you can see how I'm applying the colour to have a graduated wash like this by just adding some water on the bottom and pulling the paint into it. Most of the colours that I'm using today are made by Winsor & Newton just because I've had them for a very long time and it's my kind of go-to brand but I, I don't have a, a favourite brand as such. So next up is our beautiful yellow ochre. Um, this is a semi-opaque colour and again I use it quite a lot for doing things like stamen and anther in the middle of flowers because um, by profession I'm a by profession, I am a botanical artist and I use these two colours quite a bit. And I think it's a lovely kind of muted yellow tone and I really, really love it. So then we have um, raw umber. This is a transparent granulating and staining colour by Winsor & Newton. And I like to use it because um, if I mix it with a colour like indigo or Payne's grey, it gives a really kind of dark um, muted colour for wood or bark or that sort of thing and I really do like it. It's also a really good colour glazer. So watercolour can be glazed on top of another colour to give it a really vibrant tone and I'll talk to you about that in a little moment. So next up we have my absolute favourite colour ever which is transparent orange and I use this all the time. Um, this particular brand is by Schmink or Schmincke and it's a brilliant colour for glazing over different watercolours which I'll show you in a moment. So this is a, it's actually marketed as a semi-transparent but to me it really is a kind of glowy, transparent, beautiful, vibrant orange which is completely beautiful and I love it. And finally we have Burnt Umber by Winsor & Newton and again this is a transparent wash. So now that these colours are dried, I want to explain to you a little bit about watercolour glazing and how we can really level up our colours by putting some of these colours on top of the existing washes once they are dry. So first of all, I'm looking at the, um, the cadmium yellow pale, cadmium yellow pale, and I'm putting a wash of quinacridone gold on the top. And you can see that the cadmium yellow is still coming through underneath and now it has a different level of colour and vibrancy. I absolutely love glazing colours over one another so that you can get a different look and add some depth to your colours that you have. So transparent orange on top of the cadmium lemon and we're just going to continue glazing again. We have Indian yellow glazed with transparent orange and you can see how this really really brightens up the colours like this. So when you're working with watercolour glazing, it's really important that your colours are completely dry before you apply your glaze or watercolour wash, otherwise your colours will bloom. So I'm going to use a little bit of quinacridone gold and I'm applying it to the yellow ochre colour here. 
you can see yet again how it really lifts that colour and brightens it up. I love quinacridone gold, in fact all of the quinacridones for the ink-like properties and you can see how it really has levelled up that beautiful um, middle tone there and also over the transparent orange to brighten it even further. So having swatched out these colours, it would be a real shame not to put them to use. So I've done a simple line drawing here from a photograph that I've taken from my garden. And I'll put the line drawing and the reference photograph in the Facebook group, details of which I'll put in the description box underneath this video, along with all the materials that I'm going to be using. So this is a kind of looser style and I'm finding it difficult to get out of my botanical roots here, but I wanted to show you how you can have a little bit more fun with watercolour and make it um, a little bit less stressful because painting should be enjoyed. So we're just applying a mix of cadmium yellow pale and we have cadmium lemon and a tiny bit of Indian yellow here and I'm using my spotter brushes here to apply the watercolour. You can see how I'm just dropping it in and just referencing my photograph there and these spotter brushes are amazing for almost like a I'm using like a felt tip pen to almost colour in as you can see here. The tip of the brush is really perfect for putting it into the little corners of these paints. But I don't want this to be too accurate, I want it to be a real sort of gentle, relaxed style painting. So um, just dropping in the colour like this and just looking at my reference photograph from time to time. So this paper that I'm using today um, is a hot press paper. I generally don't use hot pressed, I'm more of a mixed media girl or maybe um, my rougher papers. So I just thought I'd show you my professional brand today so that you can try it for yourself if you want to. But any paper or any paints will do. I keep saying that because it's important that everybody can join in with these tutorials and have fun with them. So if painting yellow flowers is your thing, I have done a full length botanical watercolour tutorial and I will link it in the information card on the top of your screen right now and I'll put it in the description box underneath this video if you'd like to try something a little more colour accurate. So just dropping in these colours, the reason I'm switching between cadmium lemon and cadmium yellow pale is because I just want a little bit of variation on those petals. So just colouring in those petals with this little spotter brush. This is a number two size and I get them from Rosemary & Co and like I said I'll link them in the description box underneath this video. I have a mix of burnt umber here and I'm just adding it to the little bud that you can see here and I've added sap green onto my palette and I'll just mix a little bit of yellow in with it just to make it a sort of slightly more olivey tone here and we are just applying this on the green areas of the plant. Just super super easy and uh, stress free painting. I'm just putting a tiny bit of green onto the underside of this part here where you can just see me painting down onto the stalk. Now being the clumsiest person I know, you can see that I've accidentally painted some yellow paint onto the paper. I think it probably got onto my hand. So I'm using my flat synthetic brush. Um, this is damp and I'm just wiggling it onto the paper like this and patting it dry, trying to remove some of it. Because we're using a background wash on this, it doesn't matter too much, but I just wanted to show you how I would normally go about um, removing any areas. And if that doesn't work, I'm using a damp magic eraser to gently pat out that colour. But I don't want to damage the background paper here because, um, as I said, we're going to be adding some paint to it. And if I scrub too much um, on a plain white background, it would be fine. But because we are adding some colour, it will um, aggravate the paper and make it damaged and we won't be able to paint over it. So you'll notice that I've taped down my watercolour paper with some just ordinary masking tape and that will form the frame. So I'm just mixing up a perillion 
uh, violet wash here. You can use any color that you have for the background, but make sure that it's really, really watery because we want it to be really, really soft and blurry. So I'm just adding a puddle of water here to my little dish, and I'm going to add some of the perylene violet with my stubby little old spotter brush here that I use for mixing paint because you don't want to spoil the end of your good spotters or your good brushes. So always use um, an older brush for mixing your paint up like this. I'm going to be using my number six size spotter to add the water to the paper before we start painting. So we're working wet in wet for this part here. You can see how light this color wash is and we can just add the colors a little bit later to intensify the paint if we want to, but that's the kind of color that we're looking for. So my number six spotter, um, use whatever size brush you have that will help you get the water onto the watercolor paper like this. So we're just going to put the water where we want the paint to go. And I'm not being too fussy with this one because it is a kind of light, um, a light wash and it doesn't really matter if it does go onto the, the flower. So we want the water to be kind of loaded onto the paper so that it shines and glistens, but we don't want it to be soaking wet. If the paper is too wet, the paint will just, um, it will just sit on the paper and not absorb. So you want to apply this and then just let it settle for a minute or so, so that it's just slightly glossy and damp. We don't want it to be shiny, shiny. So once you're happy with that, you can just pick up your paint and drop it onto the paper like this. I'm just taking off the excess first. Now remember that watercolor paint does dry lighter, so we may need to go in later with another glaze. I'm just using the tip of my spotter to kind of wiggle the paint, manipulate that paint into the smaller corners here. But like I said, don't be too fussy about it. Just let the paint settle and do its work and we can tidy up any edges later. So we do have a Patreon site with different tutorial levels here. So we have various membership tiers with various rewards to fit your budget. And if you'd like to take a look, um, it's also a really good way for you to support my channel. So going back to this little tutorial here, you can see me just dropping in this beautiful perylene violet mix here and just letting it settle into the paper by using the brush to manipulate the paint like this. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please hit that like button and you may want to consider subscribing to the channel because we do have brand new content coming out every Tuesday. And if you hit that notification bell, you'll be notified every time we post up new content so you don't miss any of our tutorials. So hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you want to do that. That'd be really, really helpful and very supportive. Thank you. So back to painting, you can see me using this little brush here to wiggle that paint between the petals like this. I've speeded this part up for you a little bit because it's kind of repetitive. So you can see what I'm doing here. And just adding another layer of this perylene violet wash here. So while the paint is still damp, I'm just dropping in some of the green mix that was left behind on my palette. So we have sap green with, it was Indian yellow, and I'm just letting this blur naturally because we have a little bit of grass or some leaves on the side here that I wanted to add, but I just wanted to give the illusion of it having that lovely little hue there of green. Um, now that it's dry, it's obviously a lot lighter, and so we can go in with another layer of the perylene working wet and wet again. 
You can see that there are a few sort of watercolour blooms on my paper, but I'm really not bothered by that. I actually think it looks quite cool and I'm happy to keep it in in this occasion. But I'm just painting over it with this perylene wash again. So now that that glaze is absolutely dry, I'm just using a mixture of Indian yellow on the paper here just to enhance one or two of the petals. And I have mixed a tiny bit of sap green with it. Like I said, it doesn't have to be color accurate. I'm just trying to get some dimension on the petals here so that they don't look completely flat. So just using the tip of my spotter brush like this to just add a little bit of dimension and a little bit of form to the petals. So I'm just mixing up a little bit of green for the stems. So we have sap green here with a tiny bit of, I think I'm going to use something like a, one of the burnt umbers or something like that, just to dumb it down a little bit. So like I said, I'm not being too accurate with the colors, but we just want to be a, a sort of muted green tone here. I'm just adding it to the buds. So now that I have this colour mixed, I'm just using it to just outline some of the stem like this. So I mix... As you can see, I'm just dropping in this colour uh, just to enhance the stems and the buds like this.
So I'm just painting in some of the wispy green sections so you can see that are on the photograph here and I want them to be nicely blurred. So it, the paper is still damp and we can go over it with some water if necessary because I want them to look, look really, really soft. So just dropping those in. I actually really like the perylene violet wash on the background. I didn't think they would go together. I tried to sort of get the background color kind of the same hue as the photograph, but it doesn't matter what color you use. But I actually think it looks really, really, really nice with this uh, yellow tones here. So just blur that in with a damp brush and just to merge those colors together. So we have a mix of transparent orange and burnt amber here and I'm just going to go over the middle part of these little buds to enhance that colour as I felt it was a little bit flat. I'm just dropping in some green as well. There was also an element of this orange tone around the centre of this flower so I'm just dropping that in as well. Again, this is a number two size spotter, but always use what you have. So just looking at my color chart there to drop in uh, some more of the, what have we got here? We have the Indian yellow. So I'm adding a little bit more purple to the green to darken it up a little bit. Once again, to add a little bit more of a darker value to the buds at the top. Making sure that my <laughs> wash is dry underneath. So you could see me adding a tiny bit of yellow and green together there in a really weak consistency. Again, just to add a tiny bit of contrast to some of the petals that I felt looked a little bit flat. Mm -hmm. 
So now that everything's dry, I'm going to use a fine liner pen. This is a uni pen and it's waterproof um, ink. Don't feel you have to do this. I just really love the sort of illustrative look that this gives. This is a 0.5 size, so it's really, really fine. And I'm using it to outline the petals like this. Now, this is, an also a, this is also a really good opportunity to sharpen up any edges that you may want to tidy up. But like I said, you don't have to do this. I just really love the look that it gives. So I've already done some of the outlines here and I'll show you once again how I just used it to draw around these pretty little petals like this. And as I'm doing it, I'm adding, I'm sharpening up those serrated edges that you can see on the petals just to give them some definition like this. I'm also adding in a couple of imaginary petals because I felt it just needed a little bit more of a, a little bit more drama and a little bit more of an illustrative look. So you can do that with these pens. They are absolutely amazing and they are waterproof. And like I said, they have this really um, lovely fine point and you can add some veining and some details with them as well. So they're really, really good for adding any fine details that you may find are too small to add with your paintbrush if you're doing this kind of line and wash style painting. And I will just continue to do this until the painting is finished.